Radical man. Hello, huge movie fanatic Nate, stopping on by. This time I'm coming at you to review a movie that, you know, when the poster came out, I had some interest in it. I, ca I can't remember if I've ever saw, before seeing the movie, if I ever saw a trailer of this. I would imagine I did. Um, but I was able to stream this movie for free online, and, you know, once I found out it was available for streaming online for free, um, I was just like, oh, wow, this is a movie that I've kind of had some, you know, relatively, you know, high interest in, you know, being, having been a teenager. It's funny because as soon as 1990 hit, you know, well, yeah, I was, I was 13. So I spent my entire teen years, you know, 13 through 18 in the 90s. So, you know, a, a movie called the mid-90s or whatever, is this called the mid-90s? I'm going to actually review the mid-90s, a movie by that title and stuff, and it has this kid with a big shirt on and all this kind of stuff. I was just like, oh, wow, that might be kind of cool, you know, being someone who, as I said, was a teenager, spent his entire teenagehood in the 90s. It might be kind of a cool, you know, wonder years, if you will, for my generation kind of a movie or whatever. And having streamed it online, oh, yeah, I should also mention that, you know, this movie is purported to have been, been written and directed by this guy. I, I dislike him so much, I'm not even going to say his name in this review, but, you know, if you know anything about this movie, you know who I'm talking about. Obviously, since I won't even say his name, I should, it's, you know, needless to say, I'm not a big fan of him, more the opposite, kind of an anti-fan of this particular individual. It's supposed, this movie is supposed to have been written and directed by this individual. The one thing I think I like about this movie the most is that it was actually, you know, from what they say online and stuff, was actually shot on 16mm, which was really cool, with so many things being shot digital these, these days, and even the big, big, big A movies and stuff. So it was really refreshing to have this movie not only being shot on film, but also like 16mm um, film as well. And what was really cool about his home video presentation, another thing that I really liked about it is being shot on 16mm was also presented uh, in the 133 aspect ratio. So on your widescreen TV, you got the black bars on the sides. I also appreciated that aspect as well. That was kind of cool and, and added also to the, you know, the movie, the retroness, if you will, of the movie or whatever. And to be honest, when the movie started with just this shot of the, you know, the hallway or whatever, and the kid comes slamming up against the, you know, the hallway wall and is beaten up by his brother or whatever and all this kind of stuff, I was like, oh wow, maybe this is going to be a really, really great movie. And also I should mention that the music was done by, you know, Trent Reznor and uh, his buddy that did help him do music lately. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but this Ross, this something or other Ross guy, you know, they did the music for, uh, you know, the social network and stuff. And actually a buddy of mine was a huge Nine Inch Nails fan and actually the, so the music in the social network I just liked so much that it actually kind of got me into Nine Inch Nails, and I subsequently got all the you know all, all their albums and stuff like that. And the soundtrack to Social Network for me really you know made me appreciate Trent Reznor's work a lot more than I had prior. Um, so that's just a side note. But one thing I will say, when the movie started, I didn't know that you know they did the music, and I was just like, oh wow, they he, they did the music too. And I was just like, as the movie was starting, I was like, this is. This is exciting. This movie might be really, really cool. And I might have to buy this on Blu-ray. And what I'll say right now, okay, so I don't forget later, is that, the, you know, the, the, the music is completely wasted on this movie. Like, it's not bad music or whatever, but I, I feel like, the, you know, the, as the movie wore on, it was just like, oh my god, that, that's all this movie is. And I just feel like, you know, to have Trent Reznor and his buddy, whatever his name is, blah, 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 Ross, Actidius, or Actius, I can't, I don't know how to spell this, or how, or how to, well, I don't know how to spell it either, <laughs> I don't know how to say his first name, I feel like, you know, they were just way too good of, you know, musicians to actually, you know, have anything to do with what, had, what turned out, in my opinion, to be a piece of more or less crap movie, so it started on a good point, basically this movie's about this, I don't know what, this, I don't know if he's 12, 11 or 12 year old, Kid, and I, you know, the, one of the things I like most about the movie, besides its aspect ratio and it's, you know, shot on 16 millimeter, is the kid. I do like the main kid in the movie. He's kind of got this, you know, not only is it a movie that takes place, supposed to take place in the mid 90s or whatever, but the kid also kind of reminds you of young Corey Feldman, in, in, a, in, a, in a, you know, in a, in a, in a way. So I appreciated that. I don't know. I, I don't know if that was intended, but as a viewer, that's 
kind of what I see and you know I'm not to take away from the kid himself the kid himself is, is you know was good and like I say probably one of the, the high high points of this movie and it's basically about this kid who's just like God, you watch this movie and I'm just so glad I don't ever have to be hopefully ever have to be a kid again not in this life anyway and with any luck there you know this is the only life I'll have to live so you know <laughs> I just watched that was one of the biggest takeaways from this movie is that oh my gosh I'm just so glad that I'm not a kid anymore because just this oh you know what's so funny about being a kid is like you, you think someone who's like a year older than you is just so much older than you and if they're two years older oh my gosh they're just such an adult you know if, if you're 16 and someone's 18 it's just like oh my god they can buy cigarettes not that you know i ever smoked or had any interest in smoking it was just an example i'm just saying that it's funny how when you're a kid like if someone you know if you're 12 and someone's you know 13 14 15 they're just like oh my god they're so old and cool so that's basically what this movie's about this this kid has got this abusive older brother you know, punching him out and doing all this and that. And he sneaks into his older brother's room at the beginning of the movie. And I don't know if going through his stuff or whatever, I don't remember how he actually, I, mean, I think how he found these skater kids or whatever. He comes across these skater kids, maybe just sees them at the park or out on the street or whatever. And kind of, he tries to, then he pawns off some stuff to his bro older brother to like get this kiddie skateboard or whatever. And he shows up there just sitting around. He kind of wants to get in with these older skater kids that are hanging around the skate shop and the skate parks or whatever. So, so the movie's basically about this younger kid just trying to get in with this skater clique or whatever that of older kids who he thinks is so cool and all this stuff. And, you know, <clears throat> let me just say that, I mean, I, f I feel like these, these kids are just, I mean, these, these aren't people like I hung out with at all. I would have had no interest in hanging out with people like this. That, that's the reason I really don't like this movie is because the kids in this movie, the skater kids, if you will, in my opinion, are just so, they're just so uninteresting in the stuff they talk about and the way they talk. And that's another thing in this, about this movie, that has got so many, so many of these, uh, these phrases that these kids say, like, um, I've got them written down here, dope. I mean, I, I thought, I didn't hear anyone saying that shit in the mid-90s. Sick, I mean, I think that's a 20, dope and sick are only things that I've heard so far pretty much in the 21st century. Of course, I didn't grow up in California. Maybe that shit was being said in California in the mid-90s. Um, you know, are you kidding me right now? Uh, what else was said here? Like, what's good? I mean, I don't know if people were saying that shit and, you know, blah 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 as fuck you know that's crazy as fuck and you know nice you know back in the 90s i mean the, the word that was kind of in the place of nice was bad at least in the midwest something was bad man or maybe the mid the late 80s early 90s was bad i never heard anyone say nice until the 21st century so there's a whole handful of you know of course being from the midwest maybe this shit was said in the 90s there's a whole handful of phrases and all kinds of stuff that people are saying now that I don't remember anyone saying in high school or in school back in the 90s so it's kind of like you know if you're supposed to be doing a movie that takes place in the mid 90s you know unless people really were saying this shit in California if that's the case then I'm wrong but if they were you know if they weren't saying this shit I just I just hate when you make a movie that takes place like 25 years prior to present and you people are saying all the current trendy uh, all the current things that people are saying now in the movie just because it's almost like they're not even aware of saying this shit it's just they write it into the movie because that's what's be that's the vernacular for now you know so that was a big complaint about this movie for me as well it's just like well it's supposed to take place in the mid 90s and like I say I don't remember anyone saying all this shit back then so that's what this movie is. It's basically this little younger kid who wants to get in with this, you know, older kid of quote unquote cool kids who just drink and like do drugs and just go to parties and all this stupid shit. And, he, and as the movie wears on, he, you know, he gets himself in with, uh, in with these older kids and one of the kids actually ends up giving him a brand new skateboard and stuff because, you know, the, the kid likes the kid and all this and that and to me to be honest I, f I found the movie just depressing because it's this young kid who's in my opinion getting in with all these bad uh, you know influences and these kids taking them to parties and doing I mean the kids like just doing he's drinking and doing drugs and he does this stupid thing where they're on the roof and they're trying to jump this gap in the roof and 
so one of the kids does it because he's able, and the other kid tries it just to show off, and he, you know, the young kid in the movie, he does it and tries to show off, and he just goes bam and just hits the, lands on a table below and almost, you know, freaking dies or breaks his neck, and it's just like, are we supposed to watch this movie as something like endearing because all this kid is doing by, you know, hooking up with these older kids who he thinks are so cool is just, you know, risking his life, falling off buildings, doing drugs, you know, drinking, smoking at a young age and nearly dying. It's just depressing that this kid, in my opinion, is, you know, fallen in with the wrong crowd and stuff. And later on, there's this weird scene where, you know, the kids go to this party or this house with these girls. And there's this younger, or I mean, there's this older girl who's probably, I don't know what she's supposed to be, you know, whatever. 16 or 17. And that's this weird scene where it's like this girl is interested in this young boy who's like 11 or 12. And she takes him into the bedroom and she takes off, you know, it's like, you can't. No, she she's just got like underwear on and it's just a really creepy scene because I mean it's just like the sexual scene with this boy who's like in actuality when they're filming at 11 or 12 and it's just like what the you know even though it is like girl and boy it's just oh that scene was just kind of gross to me and it's like does that really I mean I'm sure everything pretty much happens out there in the world but where a girl's like you know, six, 15, 16, 17 going to be interested in an 11-year-old boy and, you know, from what he says in the movie, of course we don't show anything luckily, but from what he says in the movie, they exchanged, you know, hand favors or whatever, and it's just like, oh, another endearing little plot point. And it's just like, as the movie wore on, it's just more and more just kind of ghetto, trashy, nasty crap. So, you know, that's pretty much what the, the whole movie's about. Luckily, it's a relatively short movie. I think it's just over 80 minutes or something like that. What ends up happening at the end is, um, you know, another thing about these, these kids that this, you know, these, these kids that this younger kid is hanging out with, they just, he makes, you know, it, it makes the relationship with him and his brother and him and his mom just crap, and the kid spazzes out at his mom, and his mom's just, you know, just looking out for his interests and the kid it's just he's these kids that he's this kid's hanging out with are just turning this kid into shit and what happens at the end of the movie there's this one character who's always drunk slash high slash whatever and of course this kid's driving and it's just like oh great you know you know that just the way that this movie's going you know that this kid's gonna get everyone killed and sure enough they get in a car accident in a really low budget pardon me pardon me again way to do it it's just like oh my gosh like when you, you, they show this one character in the back he's like i want to get out or something and then you just show this weird like yeah it just gets all bright and cut to black and then it was just like then it cuts to the back to this you know this vehicle van or whatever on its side and it's just like oh what a low you know lo-fi low budget way to do it it's just like oh give me a break so i mean you know this this drunk slash stone kid was driving them everyone home and in a car accident nearly kills everyone the one who gets hurt the most is this young kid and he's like got a broken arm from what we can see and it's just like oh what an endearing movie you know these kids are just ruining this kid's life and they almost kill this kid and what ends up happening at the end of the movie he's in the hospital and i don't know his brother who was just beating him up and you know giving him shit up until this point in the movie is there and he's like oh Looks like he makes up with brother, probably just for a while he's got a cast on. Probably when the cast comes off, the brother's going to, you know, start beating him again. But, uh, and then your mom's there, and she goes out into the waiting room, and it's just the most endearing, you know, moment in all of cinema history when we see in the waiting room all his delinquent friends sitting in the waiting room asleep, um, there at the hospital and it's just so and it's just so dumb that it's probably supposed to be all endearing when it's just like well fuck it's the least they can do is be there because you know this one kid who was driving drunk slash stoned or whatever high nearly killed the, you know all the kids and in particular this kid in the hospital it's just like oh fuck and if i was the mom and the mom's like do you want to see him like accepting them in you know, it's almost like she didn't like these kids, and now that they're all there at the hospital in the waiting room, it's like she likes them or is willing to accept them into, you know, her son's life. And it's just like, that'd be my exact opposite reaction. I'd be like, okay, you know, you're not going to see him anymore because he's in the hospital with a broken arm. He could have been, he could be dead or worse. And it's just like, it was just like the movie was written by an idiot, well... 
I was supposedly written and directed by this guy who I'd pretty much call an idiot, so I guess it kind of makes sense. And that is pretty much my review of, of mid-90s. It started out like maybe the first five minutes or so of something that I thought might be kind of avant-garde and actually kind of cool, but then once he started, these kids started hanging out with these older skater kids and there's just being around these characters was just so uninteresting and actually depressing that people are this, I don't know what, uh, it's just like, as the movie wore on, it's just like, uh, I will give this movie one star out of four stars just for having a relatively engaging young kid lead and being shot 16 millimeter and 133 aspect ratio on home video presentation. I would imagine, you know, that was probably projected that way in a theater or whatever. I imagine this had some kind of limited theatrical run, I don't remember really or anything like that, but uh, uh, you know, it's not a complete and total loss. Oh, uh, one last thing I'll say before I end the review, as far as being sh taking place in the mid-90s, I mean, the, that's something that I thought was really dumb about this movie as well, because there's nothing about this movie that really needs to take place in the mid-90s, like this exact same story can take place now. So, so being, so actually, they didn't take advantage, you know, with the exception of maybe Super Nintendo, you know, and PlayStation scenes where a kid's got a Super Nintendo controller and teenage, of course, you know, kids probably have turtle, you know, bed sheets now, you know, and, you know, with the exception of seeing like a PlayStation 2 controller and PlayStation, or I mean, not PlayStation 2, I mean, Super Nintendo controller and Super Nintendo games and, you know, PlayStation and stuff like that. I mean, there's really no reason to even have this take place in the mid-90s. Um, there's nothing about it except for just vehicles or whatever. I mean, even those fashions, even what kids were wearing and stuff, I mean, it might as well have just been take place now because, so what I'm trying to say uh, repeatedly, I don't know if I'm succeeding, is there's just, you might as well, I don't know why it was decided to have this movie take place in the mid-90s, because what I'm saying is you don't get a whole lot of, like, I didn't get a lot of feelings of, ooh, ah, uh, the good old days or anything like that. Nothing, you know, so many things like video stores and stuff that existed then don't exist now, so you can't go filming them. So, I mean, there's, it's really hard to make a movie that takes, takes place 25 years ago unless you have a huge budget and you're able to actually, you know, make some fake video stores and, you know, just d deck things out like completely, you know, 90s or whatever. So, with the exception of just seeing, like, tapes and, you know, CD Walkmans and, a, you know, a Super Nintendo controller and stuff like that, I mean, you might as well just have this take place now. So thank you very much for watching my review of mid-90s. Feel free to let me know what you think of this movie. You know, and if you like this movie and you think, if you think it's the dopest thing ever, or the sickest movie ever, I mean, you know, don't have to cuss me out or anything. You can just say very politely, you're wrong as fuck, bro. This movie's sick. So thank you very much for watching this review, and as always, we'll catch you on the next one.